Okay. And I think I'm recording. <sighs> Here's another one of our exciting Excel videos. In this video, we're going to examine the following. We've got a project finance model. And in this project finance model, it's a model of a solar project. And a solar project has part of building a solar project is making an inverter that uh, converts the electricity from direct current to alternating current. Now these inverters don't necessarily have the same lifetime as the project themselves. So somewhere down here we have the cost of the inverter and the years until the inverter is replaced. And different scenarios, I should have uh, have different cases. In the last case, there's no inverter replacement. In the low case, we do it eight years, which means there'll be a couple of inverter replacements. And in the base case, there's, uh, there's I think, one inverter replacement. Now, the ta I put a different tax life on the inverters than the other uh, equipment, and I have an annual uh, tax depreciation rate. Here's the problem. The problem is, and just a minute, where did we put the um, timing? Here's the, once I put the inverter, I used the edate function, and then the edate function again to show that there could be two inverters. So the first edate function starts with the commercial operation date. The second e-date function takes the last one. Why don't I uh, uh, show what that is with a little uh, data validation? I think I did Alt D L inverter I N V E R replacement. Use the the e-date function to. Then I put a different tax life. I used the VDD, variable uh, declining balance function in Excel, but I did this on a uh, annual basis. And the model is computed after the uh, commercial date operation date. The model is computed on a semi-annual period, meaning there's six months in each, every period. And a year comprises two columns of the model. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to convert the depreciation rate from an annual rate to a semi-annual rate. So I'm going to put two rates. We'll put a uh, let's put a, a period here first. What we want to do is get take the period starting. From starting from the date of the replacement, and then uh, uh, go up from there. So let's put, I'm just going to add one and control R. So we have, well, that's kind of a long period, but it, this would be 50, 60 uh, periods would be 30 years in our case. Okay, now I can associate with each period, I can associate the year. And then I forgot who told me this, one of my uh, people in my class, it was, it was a wonderful little trick. Round up. And when you do round up, you take this number and take the year, divide it by the two, the number of periods per year. F4, whoops, that was F3, F4, and then put a uh, comma zero. And that means one divided by two is 0. 0.5. You round it up, you get one. And then you take the next one, and it's still one. 
2 divided by 2 is 1, and that rounds up to still 1. The next one, I'm doing control r is 3 divided by 2, so on and so forth. So whenever you want to find the year after you have the period, you can use the round up. Whoops. I'm going to put using round up function. And I think I'm going to, I know this is taking a little long, but just to remind you how to do this, I'm going to, in the file, go to data. I'll do it slowly this time. Data validation, input message, year, year, and I'll put uh, use the round up function with the periods in a, it, it's really the, 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 the columns to comprise a year. If you have a better suggestion on how to name it, please email me. Shift, control, right arrow, control, R. And now, once we uh, have this, then we'll just use the period. We'll compute the periodic depreciation rate. And the periodic depreciation rate, we'll just use a lookup function. It seemed to have uh, hmm, repeated the data validation. But let's look up the year and then look up on the year up at the top F4. And then once we have that, let's look up the rate for the inverters. Press the F4. And finally, at the very end, since we have two periods per year, we've got to divide that by the the number two. Can you help me find that? That number two is down here and press the F4 button. Okay. Uh, shoot. Okay. What happened here? Uh, uh, shift, control, right arrow. Control. All right. So now we have the first there is a 40% depreciation rate, and we have 20%, so on and so forth. All right. Now, once we uh, have that depreciation rate, here's the pain. We'll, I set up in the model, we first put in the EBITDA, the revenues, the expenses, then the capital expenditures, and then after we're finished with the capital expenditures, we can go to the next section, which is to compute the depreciation and the, uh, and I computed the depreciation, the simple part on the opening balance. And then we, now we have to put the depreciation on the inverter replacement. Now, oops, here we have a de inverter replacement coming in this year. So in the subsequent years to this year, we need to put the depreciation right in. And of course, if we, switch this from the base case to the low case, then we'll have uh, two different uh, periods for the inverters, and we'll have to compute the depreciation on both of those rates. Now, this is a problem that involves something that you've probably often seen in models. And this, I'm going to the model named financial function library right now and in this financial function library you can compute you can use a lookup table and compute a, a lookup from the depreciation rate and in the depreciation section i go through on this but there's a lot easier way to do this you compute you can make your own depreciation function to test how this works let me just do this one shade whoops oh shit Shade this uh, area, put equal de depreciation, D-E-P-R. You see that? And then tab. Remember, please be lazy in Excel. Press the FX function, and it says put in the CapEx. So we put in our CapEx, and then press Enter. And then it says put in the depreciation rate. So you just put in the depreciation rate, starting in year one, of course. Now this is an array function, so you press Shift, Control, Enter. Whoops. Guess you have to first press OK. Ah, no. 
shift, and I press F2, and shift, control, enter, and you see you get the same number. Now, if you go to the developer tab in this financial function library, you can see there's a macro. Oops, let me put it on this workbook. And there's a macro that says depreciation functions. You can edit that, and right underneath there, there should be there's a just straight line functions. We're using a uh, accelerated function. So I'm going to copy this depreciation function. I'm going to copy it from our financial function library, and then I'm going to move it into our the the, the uh, file we're working on. I'm still in developer, it appears, and then I'm going to go to macros and press edit. And in the uh, underneath the date functions. I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to go up to the top and put sub depreciation. Now I have to, I'm going to call it functions. Now the reason I'm doing that is because when we, in the, when you look for these functions in the macros, you can see now, you see it says depreciation functions, but it doesn't say the function for depreciation itself. It doesn't list the functions. I don't know why. Maybe there's some method you can uh, use to find that. If you do, please send me an email. I beg you. Okay. And this function just has a little loop. There's. You can go to the depreciation page of my website and get step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. But right now we've just incorporated it. And now let's just put in the depreciation on the inverted replacement. So I press shift control, right arrow, equal depreciation. Again, tab. And then do exactly the same thing. We put our little FX button. Thank you for, uh, somebody in Germany told me this. He was wonderful. Uh, uh, and then shift control, right arrow. So we've got our Cap X in, and then let's go up and get that depreciation rate. That's why we I took so long putting that depreciation rate into it. Can you help me find this? Where I was too low. This should be in the tax and depreciation section of the model. And apparently I'm not over to the left. Okay, and shift control right arrow. Now I'm going to press Shift Control Enter, and now hopefully, oh, there we go. Our depreciation is in there for the first inverter, and then in there for the second inverter. And I switch it to the base case, and now we just have a depreciation on the first inverter. And there, there I put the Shift Control One save the file and that's it for that video it took 13 minutes oh no you should have been able to do that faster